then you went on to study at university and you studied law. And um, by the time you graduated with your law degree, you had five children and now you have eight. Yeah, um, <laughs> a bit of a surprise, unexpected. <laughs> but um, it was, yeah, I went to law school um, you know, I'll, I'll admit it, I was quite a lazy student um, before I had my children. I was quite um, cruisy, you know, I would just go to university just to pass. And then in my second year of law school, I got pregnant with my eldest daughter, Acacia, who's now 16. And for me, that just totally switched my mindset. It became that I couldn't fail. She was, um, you know, when you have mouths to feed, really drives you. So mm. for me, that gave me purpose to actually knuckle down. And so by the time, yeah, I'd finished my law and arts degrees at Auckland University five and a half years after falling pregnant. Yeah, we were, um, had four, pregnant with number five. And um, yeah, for my husband and I, it was quite a difficult time. My husband uh, worked as a manual labourer, as a timber machinist. So he was just earning above the minimum wage and I was studying full time. Mm. So it was really difficult to um, make ends meet as you do as a young family. But um, we both knew that me continuing in my education was an investment in our family's yeah. future. Mm. So fortunately for us, um, having the children and for a lot of Pacific young women, um, I think at the time, they, uh, we were faced with a bit of adversity from family saying that, well, you know, what a waste, her life is over. But actually, it just, for me, just drove home, gave me purpose and gave me meaning as to why I had to study really hard. And we were really fortunate at the time that um, my parents-in-law, the Edmonds family, they were extremely supportive of me studying and of supporting our young family. So um, every day, Chris's mother would come across the paddock because we live right next door. She'd come across the paddock. She would um, look after the kids from like seven o'clock in the morning. I would go to university at like eight o'clock in the morning, stay there for lectures till about four, come home, cook dinner, clean the house. My husband would come home. By the time we'd settled the family to bed around about 10, 10.30, then I was ready to study. Mm. So it was hard and it was mm. self-inflicted, but it was, <laughs> it was definitely worth it. And um, I remember my husband to help me not feel so lonely while I was studying, and because I was still breastfeeding children at the time. Um, he would come and camp out in the lounge with the kids so they would all sleep on mattresses while I was on the dining room table studying. Mm. And it was just, um, you know, typing away, doing assignments, baby would cry, feed them, go back to your studies. So, yeah. but again, it's finding what your what drives you when it comes to studying and, and using that to push you through, particularly through the hard times. That's a really powerful motivation, having mouths to feed. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and so great that you had the support of family and you had um, you know, a village around you to help you get through that time. Yeah, and it, it really goes back to that saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, and that's how as Pacific people... Or eight yeah, children. <laughs> or eight children. <laughs> as Pacific child, uh, people and as Māori people, that's just how we were, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, there's no way that we could have got through that stage without the support of our families. Because mm. Chris is Māori. Yeah, he's yeah. Māori, yeah. Mm. So Chris is Māori from Ngāpuhi. Mm. Um, his family is... Um, from Karatu and from Kaikohi. Mm. Yeah.